beautiful people, this is Tanya, and I'm doing another what's for dinner. What's for dinner tonight is pizza, chicken pizza to be specific. So this is what I'll be using. I have the great, great value pizza crust. I have never used this before. I've used the crescent roll, so I'm assuming it's going to work. We'll see. We'll see together. Okay. Bought some rotisserie chicken. Just took it off the bone. Using that. It smells good. I found that, and it's just a personal thing, that I don't like Sam, not Sam's, I don't like Walmart rotisserie chicken as much as I do Sam's. I don't know why. They're the same people, but but they have they may have different distributors, so we can go by that too. Alright. And this is white chicken pizza, by the way. I'll be using some Alfredo sauce. You can make your own if you want to, but they have it in a perfectly good jar, so why? And some of the uh, seasoning I'll be adding. Garlic granules. Some minced onion. Slap your mama. Don't play. And a little garlic salt. A little garlic salt. And Italian seasoning. Okay. Um, normally what I do is layer it one at a time. I'm being lazy. So what I'm going to do is take my, if I can get it open, take my um, Alfredo sauce, put some in my bowl. That's probably too much, but that's what I poured out. So that's, that's what we have. Move that out of before I knock it over. Okay. Add a little garlic granules. Y'all know I like garlic and everything. So, no such thing as too much garlic. Don't know that person. Just a little garlic salt. Because I will be using bacon as well. Using some bacon because why? Bacon tastes good on everything. Why not? Just a little garlic salt, not much. Because again, we got the bacon. Minced onions. And you're like, why are you fixing all of it right here? Well, because that way I know everything will be equally spread out when I cook it. See, there's a genius behind that. And I'm going to put a little sloppy mama first. Not much. It's got a little heat to it. But just a little. And some Italian seasoning. You can sprinkle it on top if you want to. Italian seasoning, which I have done. But it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Everything is subject to taste. So you fix it according to your taste. And I'm just going to stir all this together. Looks kind of like a dip. And I have some spinach here that I've drained. This is my spinach. You can try to lay this, layer this on here if you want to. I'm just going to pull some out and mix it in with this. It'll be fine. I told y'all, quit sweating the small stuff. We're going to eyeball it and see. I have a little left in there too. Like I said, it'll be fine, people. It'll be fine. Let 
And if it's too much for this one pizza, guess what? Put it in a container. And you can put it on the next pizza. It'll be fine. Okay? Put that back on there. Like I said, it's still some spinach stuff in there. Move this to the side. I'm not going to put my tomatoes in. I'm going to add my tom tomatoes individually. Have my pizza pan with parchment paper on it. And okay, let's get into this. Okay. That's that. I don't know if this comes out in a round form or oblong. I have no idea. Like I said, I've never done the pizza before. I'm done the crescent. So we're going to see what happened to Gip. And we're going to see what we come up with. Stretch it out a little bit. Try to close that hole up. Like I said, it'll be fine. It'll be all right. This end's kind of thick, so that's what I'm trying to pull on it. I'm flattening it out with my hand. I'm just playing with it. I'm just going to try to close that hole up. Hopefully this won't stick to the parchment, but if it does, it'll be... Again, it'll be fine. It's not, it's not that crucial. It really isn't. Like I said, I'm trying to get this spread out because... I like a thinner crust as opposed to a thicker crust. I really don't like how they bread. But it'll be whatever it be. As Doris Day used to say, and yes, I'm dating myself. Some of you may not even know who Doris Day is. Or who she was. K Sara Sara. Whatever will be, will be. Again, trying to hold it, close that hole. Is it perfect? No, but it's good enough. It'll work. All right, and then we're going to take this. And we're going to spread some, spread this in. Might be, I think I made just enough. We'll see how I did, because we're going to put the whole thing on here. And then we just get to spread it out. It smells good. You know, when you're making your pizza, you can put whatever you want on your pizza. I like spinach. I also like artichokes, but I didn't have any artichokes. Because if I did, that would be really good on here. See it? Don't you see it? And you go as, as far to the edge as you like. I like to go all the way to the edge. Because I like for every bite to have either meat or uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Dressing, for lack of a better term. Let's see. 
Definitely use my finger. I washed them. I washed my hands. Again, we're just spreading this out as evenly as possible. When you go back, when I go back and look at the video, I'll be like, oh man, I should have put more here. I should have done something here. Hindsight is always 20-20, as they say. But when you're doing it, all you can do is see what you can see. And I do have my oven, per the uh, manufacturer's instruction, preheated at 425 degrees. Okay. Uh-oh. Man, this smells good. It smells like, if you ever had spinach and artichoke dip, that's what it smells like. That's what made me think of the artichoke. That's how it smells. It smells yum delicious. Okay, stop. Stop already. Comes a point in time you have to stop, right? <laughs> Let me wipe my hand. So, let's do some chicken. And again, I'm just going to tear it and place it on here randomly. And I have white and dark chicken mixed in here. So, it is what it is. Some pieces are bigger, some are smaller. Just trying to get chicken on here. You know what I'm saying? I think this is breast. It feels like breast. And it looks like breast texture. But again, when you're fixing your pizza, you put as much or as little meat as you like. But whatever kind of meat you like. I make a lot of uh, shrimp pizzas all the time. I love shrimp pizza. That's one of my favorites. At least they're my favorite. Delicious. And yes, I do add bacon to it too. Because like I said, bacon goes with everything. If y'all not trying bacon on some stuff, y'all missing out. I'm telling you. Now, of course, if you're vegan or something like that, then bacon wouldn't apply to you. <laughs> but otherwise, get you some bacon. Bacon is the meat. Pork is where it's at. Now, I don't have any skin. I, I did take the skin off on this chicken when I um, deboned it. Oh, that's a rough piece right there. I did take the skin off. So there's no skin in here. At least I tried to get it off. So if I run across a piece of skin, of course, I'm just going to pull it off. I don't want any skin. Just want the uh, the white and the dark meat. And I've learned that if you have children, because I have uh, nieces and nephews that I cook with sometimes, if you have children, if you have them to help you make the pizza, and they say all you have is like veggies and stuff like that to put on it. If they put it on there themselves, they'll eat it. That's a trick I learned a long time ago. If they make it, they'll eat it. Because my niece and my nephew, they both love spinach. But that's, you know, because their mom brought them up eating spinach. So, you know, children eat what you train them to eat. If you don't introduce them to it, they won't eat it. They won't have a palate for it. Let me take back. Some will. Some some kids are adventurous. And they'll try stuff on their own. Because I was. And Sandra's the same way. She's adventurous. And she'll try things too. But I find that most people don't. Most people want to stick with what they know. And they just want to stay in that one lane. Venture out, people. There's other stuff to see, other things to do. 
more adventures to have. You don't know what you're missing. I had a cousin um, who she's de she's deceased now. Um, didn't like flying, or was afraid to fly. I don't know if she ever flown had ever flown or not, but I know she um, she was really terrified of flying, and so that would limit her to where she could go. I mean, true enough, you can go anywhere in, in the U.S. In a car, it might take you forever to get there. Well, not forever, but it'll take you a minute. Take you a little while to get there, but you can get there in the car. Okay, so I have. I think that's going to be enough for the um, the chicken. So now I'm going to do put some bacon on it. Again, let me wipe my hands. I'm going to put some bacon on this. And this is bacon I bought at Sam's. And put as much or as little as you like. But I'm telling you, you don't know what you're missing when you don't put them bacon on your stuff. They can make everything taste better. Try it for yourself and find out. I don't know what that hard piece is right there, so we're going to take that out. Okay, so that's going to be enough bacon, I think. You don't have to do a whole lot of bacon. Unless you like a whole lot. It's yours. You fix it the way you want to fix it. And I have these tomatoes that somebody gave to me. I don't know where I got them from. But I'm just, and they're uh, diced. So I'm just going to sprinkle them on the pizza. I like tomatoes. I'm picking tomatoes on it. Now my mom doesn't like tomatoes. She can pick it out. Off a slice. If she chooses to eat some pieces, she can pick, pick it out. But I'm putting it on here. And I tried to drain it. But don't really like get it all the liquid. Of course I didn't get all the liquid out because tomatoes are mostly water. Did y'all know that? Just like you are mostly water. <laughs> I got as much as I could get, but it'll be fine. It'll be all right. And the, uh, this has no salt on it, which is, I guess, kind of good, but uh, because, like I said, the bacon is salty. Then I'm going to put some cheese on here, too, but the cheese might have a little salt going in it, too. So, I don't want too much salt. And then, plus, remember, I put the garlic salt. We don't want it too salty. I don't know if I'd be able to eat it. It's too salty. That's no bueno. In case y'all don't know Spanish, bueno means good. That's no good. And don't try to speak Spanish to me. I, I only know a little bit of Spanish. So I worked in a call center one time where I was uh, worked between this one guy's from the Dominican Republic. And another guy was from El Salvador, and they used to speak Spanish all the time. And that's why I said to keep on. I was going to be like the 13th warrior, which I don't know if you've seen that movie or not, starring Antonio Banderas. Um, I said, I'm going to be like the 13th warrior. Yeah, I'm going to start talking. I'm going to start talking, which, anyway, I think. Is that good? Is that enough, y'all think? What you think? Yeah. It looks like it all be enough. Just a little bit left in there. Let me wash my hands real quick. Okay. Had to get that chicken and all that stuff off my hand before I go into my cheese. 
And I am using, because this is what I have open, Provolone and Mozzarella Blend. I have used Italian Blend before. Um, what else can I, uh, Fiesta Blend. I mean, whatever can, whatever you like. Use whatever kind of shit you want. If you like it, it'll work. How about that? Now, y'all know, as uh, far as I'm concerned, more cheese is more cheese. No such thing as too, too little cheese. And I put the cheese on top. Some people put it on the bottom. You do it your way. You do whatever way you want to. But I put the cheese on top because when it melts, it'll have to hold down the ingredients on top. At least that's my theory. And I'm sticking to it. And that's what I'm going with. Now I found that this um, provolone and mozzarella blend doesn't uh, melt as well as I like, which I'm surprised because mozzarella usually melts pretty well, and so does provolone. But provolone is my favorite cheese, and they usually melt pretty well. Like, uh, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Anyway, but that's not gonna stop us from eating the piece. No worries. Let's just keep it real. You're not gonna, that's not that's not gonna stop anything. Every place you see a spot, put the cheese. At least that's what I do. You do you. You close it up for it, knock it over, and waste cheese everywhere. Bring it up so you can see it. Yum. All right. So I'm going to, like, again, I have to eat the uh, the oven preheated to 425 degrees. And according to the manufacturer's uh, instructions, let's see. I guess I should have read it before I took it open. Open it up, right? Uh... Okay, for a cheese pizza, 9 to 13 minutes. For thin crust, 14 to 16 minutes. For thick crust. Hmm. We'll start with uh, 9 minutes. No, we'll start with 13. We'll start with 13 and see how they go. And I'll bring you back and let you know how long it actually took. All right? So this is going in the oven for 13 minutes at 425. And I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so my pizza is out. I let it cook for about 18 minutes. Yeah, about 18 minutes. That's wrong. I let it cook for about 16 minutes. I let it cook for about 16 minutes. So it's done. Um, I checked it underneath to make sure the crust hadn't burned. It hadn't. And I actually turned it, um, turned the um, broiler on to get my um, cheese a little bit brown because brown food tastes good. So that's why I did that. But you don't have to do that. It's up to you. But like I said, I don't know why this blend doesn't smooth out, for lack of a better word, like the other um, the other brands does. When they mix the provolone and the mozzarella, it just it just doesn't. Or if it's just the brand I'm buying. I don't know. I don't know. I'll try another brand. Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? But anyway, but this is what's for dinner. A white chicken pizza. Yeah. That's what we have. Or that's what I'm going to have. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. Y'all leave a legacy. Talk to you later. Bye.